Hello everyone and welcome back to the Nerd Cave. In this video I want to share with you a project I'm currently working on. It is a Raspberry Pi Pico macro keyboard that has 12 keys that you can program. Now this is only version 1 and I plan to add more features in the future. Since this is a macro keyboard the possibilities are endless. Want to have a macro to your favorite song that you always listen to on YouTube? Well no problem. Code it and map it to the correct key and you are set. Here are a few more examples, like opening software, or writing a string, or just using it as a media control device. Or opening your favorite YouTuber channel. And make sure to subscribe for more content on a Raspberry Pi Pico. And so much more. So I hope you are ready for all this information I will give to you in this video. If you are not sure what a macro keyboard is, it is a keyboard that allows users to create a macro, which is just a series of scripted actions that your computer will execute upon command. There are so many macro keyboards to choose from, but some are limited in their capabilities. There are also many DIY macro keyboard tutorials and videos using the Arduino, but today it is the Pico's time to shine. The Raspberry Pi Pico can act as a human interface device that can take the input from us humans and give us an output which is perfect since we can use this to send custom key commands to our computer. Before we make this specific Pico macro keyboard, let's first take a look at a more simple example using standard push buttons and a breadboard to create a macro keyboard. To follow along with this one, you will need the following. A breadboard, some push buttons, wires and of course your Raspberry Pi Pico. Here is the schematic diagram for the circuit I have made here. After you have built the circuit, the next step is to get circuit python on your Pico. Now to keep everything in the same place and version control of libraries and firmware, I have uploaded everything to my GitHub repository and provided links to the official site. In some circumstances, your flash memory on the Pico will cause your Pico to act funny. So we will first nuke it to ensure that our flash memory is empty. You can drag and drop a special UF2 binary onto your Pico, which is this one here, flash underscore nuke dot UF2. Download this file to your computer and then press and hold the boot cell button on the Pico and connect the Pico to the computer. Now copy and paste this on your Pico. We can now install CircuitPython. Unplug your Pico and press and hold the boot cell button again and plug in your Pico. Now download the CircuitPython UF2 file and copy and paste this to your Pico. This will flash your Pico with CircuitPython. When you go to your devices and drives, you will see a mass storage device called CircuitPy. Inside this, you will see a folder named lib. Open this folder. Now back at the GitHub repository, download this folder here called Adafruit underscore HID and paste this in that folder. And that is that. Now you are ready to start coding. Open the code.py in your favorite IDE. I am using Fonny and then in my GitHub repository. Open example1.py, copy all the code and paste it into code.py. Now let's have a look at this code together. In the first block of code, we import all the libraries we need from CircuitPython and then all the classes needed from the HID library. We then create variables and set them equal to the function from the HID library to initialize our input and output functions. In this block of code here, we create a variable for each button, set it equal to the relevant pin on the Pico, define it as a digital in, and use the internal resistor to make the pin pull down, keeping the logic level low. We create an endless loop to test if any button gets pressed, making the input high. If the value goes from low to high, commands are sent to the computer. In the first button, we use the Keyco class to send keys. In this example, we send the control key plus A, which is the shortcut for select all. The second button we use, we are using the consumer control class, to emulate consumer control devices like the multimedia keys on a keyboard. Here we send the consumer control code volume increment that will increment our volume by 2. For our third button we use the keyboard layout US class to allow us to send ASCII characters. And here we are writing the text subscribe to Nerdcave because there are awesome and somewhat useless but still entertaining projects coming up. The last button which is our fourth is just a combination of different classes to open a GUI 
which is the Windows key and it will send VLC with the new line. We shall press enter and open the VLC application. Here is a quick demonstration of the code. Selecting all the text with key codes. Controlling the volume with consumer control key code. Sending us key text. And opening VLC. After having a working prototype, I went to Easy EDA to create the schematic, making all the relevant connections from the switches to the Pico. I then imported the schematic to the PCB creator and laid out all the components to keep the PCB less than 10 by 10 cm. The reason for this is that if your PCB is less than 10 by 10 cm, it only costs $2 to manufacture 5 ports. When I received my PCBs, I did not have any mechanical key switches, but luckily I had this old broken mechanical keyboard. So I decided to reuse the keys to make the macro keyboard. The first thing I did was to remove all the keycaps so I could loosen the screws to see the inside of the keyboard to desolder the keys. Since I had no tool to remove the keycaps, I decided to use the hooligan method and just pull them all off. After taking off all the keycaps, it exposed a few screws that I loosened and this gave me access to the massive PCB with all the keys soldered. I then tried to desolder the switches with solder wick, which was very difficult to get the switches out. After getting one switch out, I tested it on a PCB to see if it fits. I then used the solder sucker, making it way more easier to desolder mechanical switches as needed. I gave each switch a continuity test to ensure they were all still working. After having enough mechanical switches, I kept them in place with Prestik on the PCB and soldered them all. I then soldered female hairpins on the board to easily insert the Pico and remove it from the board if needed. And there you go, you have your own custom Raspberry Pi Pico Macro Keyboard. The Gerber file is also available on my GitHub repository. To code this macro keyboard, the logic is the same as in our simple example. I have included the code.py file that you can use to help you get started. The code also includes a lot of comments. You should note that when I place the switches on a PCB, I put it in a very weird order by mistake. So please use this as guidance to know which key is mapped to which GPIO pin. This will help you to know which button is being pressed. This is only version 1 and I plan to upload an improved version. So if you want to see that or if you have any question, please just let me know in the comment section. I hope you found this useful. And I will see you in the next video.